Yeah. Ready? Recording, yeah. All right, yeah. folks. So we have Maria with us. Uh, Maria came for internship, and um, I have a suspicion uh, and reasons to believe that uh, her university, uh, her mentor, her faculty at the university, and her parents will be very proud of what she has done and achieved here. So let's hear what Maria has done. Before I started with my presentation, I would first like to thank Dr. Sheth for inviting me here for the internship, giving me this opportunity to interact with so many good people and giving me a chance to know and feel what research is. I, I just, the very first week that I came here, uh, in fact, the, the entire month was spent in uh, knowing what web, web about web semantics, annotations, ontologies, RDLs, XML, and similar basic terms. And uh, then I started reading a, a book on text uh, segmentation, then on the opinion mining, uh, then carried on with dialogue at modeling. But uh, for the limited time that I had of nearly three and a half months, uh, finally, Lou gave me this top uh, problem of solving entity uh, identification from the tweets. So I just focused my entire uh, work for the internship on this topic. Uh, so to start off with an overview, this entity identification starts, basically focuses on the extraction of the uh, names, uh, proper names from the tweets. Uh, say the names of persons, the org uh, names of some organizations, the location names, but it also includes some of the miscellaneous names like the, uh, some specific dates like September 11 or some of the facilities like Lokpal, Belgian Lokpal uh, as related to, the, to my uh, event in Day Against Corruption and, and similar monetary expressions too. Uh, so my motivation for this work was to know and analyze what people are talking about in a particular event on the social media. Uh, what, uh, what kind of prominent entities would influence the people the most and what kind of polarity of sentiments that people have for those entities. So uh, I, I started with, uh, my major objective was to first extract the mentions of all the entities from my tweet corpus and then remove these curious entities out and just filter the ones that were related to the specific event uh, in an automated way. So for my initial work, I just started with a collection of uh, nearly 1000 tweets on the event India against corruption and just after the pre-processing, uh, used uh, obtained a list of the noun phrases uh, using the Stanford parser and uh, it served as a kind of preliminary candidate set for me to work on, uh, work upon. Then I followed various approaches for getting the precise results, I mean for figuring out the uh, entities in, a, in the entire tweet corpus automatically uh, for getting the precise results. Uh, so my, my first approach was uh, querying the DBpedia. Uh, I, I used Sparkle query for this. So what I did was, I, I had the list of the round phrases with me. I queried, the sub, uh, queried whether a particular noun phrase belonged to the subclass of the main class thing in the DBpedia or not. And figured out if, uh, if it belonged, then it was qualified to be an entity, otherwise not. Because this uh, main class thing had uh, subclasses like company, animal, athlete, which, which qualifies to be, uh, which actually qualified uh, to be called as proper nouns in the tweets. So I, I obtained a list of the uh, noun phrases that, uh, call, uh, that were the subclasses of this main class and call them as entities. But uh, this does not relate, uh, the, there was some problem that I'll discuss later. Uh, this is just the architecture for that. Now, the next approach that I followed was using the Alchemy API. So as this API had uh, a limit on the number of hits per day with the tweets. So I, what I did was I just dumped the entire tweet corpus in a text file and provided the entire text file as an input to this Alchemy API. Because it also takes into account the context uh, in which it annotates the entities. Uh, 
So what does alchemy do? With the, like the it also figures out the entities mentioned. So, in the so it bas it's basically a service that gives you an entity back. Yes. You so you the writer services. Yeah. That right. You basically provide a the piece of text. Yeah. Text. Okay. Or, yeah, I think it, it provides more information than only the entity. Yeah. Okay. I yeah, think it, yeah. it does contextual so, based entity extraction. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. So. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, what I did was I, I then passed the result and extracted the name of the entity, its frequency, the relevance and the type of the entities uh, from the text. But I had certain problems with the uh, with these two approaches. The first thing with the DPpedia one was it was not updated very frequently. So actually when I query, when I was working on this uh, project, uh, when I queried Anna Hazari one, uh, one month back, it didn't give me any result. But I, when I queried it one month later, then it uh, annotated it as person. And, uh, the other problem was we have to provide the DBpedia, we have to query the DBpedia with exactly the same string format. I mean, if I, if I just use Anna or uh, Anna Hazari with a small letter, it doesn't give me any result for that. The Alchemy API was able to annotate most of the entities correctly, but uh, it also annotated some uh, irrelevant entities which were not related to my event, India Against Corruption, and actually gave it fairly high relevance scores. Like the Anna Mentor was given 0.49 and Anna Kaji was given 0.49 relevance. So, well, were these entities in the text? Yes. So, because we uh, we just I mean uh, crawl the entire uh, I think uh, the Twitter for the intelligence corruption and, and it it had uh, Anna it had Hazari too. Right. So it, it it also gave me a certain tw uh, tweets which had Anna can be Anna uh, Fisher yeah, and something right. like that. So that means that uh, these entities were there in the text. Were there in the text. Okay. So uh, and and it actually gave it a fairly high relevance score. That was the problem. Okay, but uh, okay. And, and my aim was to extract only those entities which were specific to a particular event. Did you get to know how many tweets had uh, that Anna win, win No, it, it just says that it has a count of nearly of eight. Okay, then you might have got the context like eight continuous tweets had one Anna winter. So not eight continuous tweets. I mean, I think in the entire uh, the random selection of the entire thousand tweets, okay. uh, Anna winter occurred eight times. Uh, moreover, it was not able to figure out few of the relevant entities that were related to the event, and uh, also it uh, annotated the facilities like Jan Rukpal Bill with the uh, type person. Moreover, it also did uh, it also had a, a Lokpal and Lokpal. It also figured out I mean Lokpal and Lokpal Bill as different entities. So there were many problems regarding that. So I was not very happy with the results. Uh, so I just, uh, I mean, uh, we thought of just carrying out with the noun phrases and uh, devising a way so that we can actually figure out more relevancy in the context. So uh, when I obtained the list of the noun phrases, I actually came across some of the abstract nouns. So my first step was just the re removal of these nouns. Uh, so first approach that I followed was just creating a small dictionary. And if any, the stem of a word uh, is contained in that dictionary, I just removed those. And the next heuristic approach that I followed was if a particular noun phrase occurs with more than say 80% of the times with, uh, with a lower, lower case letter. So it's less probable of being a proper noun and so I just used that uh, approach and removed such uh, phrases and I, I was actually able to remove these words from, the, from my list. And for the, uh, you can see that for the higher frequencies the results were, were, were better. But still, I, I needed to remove these irrelevant entities like Anna Ferris and from the India Against Corruption. I also tested uh, for Royal Wedding. So it was like Osama bin Laden, I had to, to remove that. So my next approach that I thought was uh, using Doozel, uh, I mean creating a Doozel model, with uh, starting with some seed words and just removing, chopping off the uh, entities which had uh, lower probabilities, something like that. But uh, it, it didn't work out well for me. I tried here about 25 to 30 models, generated them. And, uh, but no, it, it was not satisfactory for me. M maybe because the Wikipedia dump uh, was not updated. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, I was
was very depressed at this point and but, but then i mean finally heaven uh, he told me that this is what research is i um, if you get the results very just the next day that you run the code then it's it's not research so next we thought of fusing the wikipedia as a knowledge base for figuring out the relevancy of the uh, entities from from my list and i was actually able to remove all these spurious entities on the small corpus and it, it it gave me better results i'll just show you the evaluation part okay uh, when i was actually able to remove the irrelevant entities i just used this wikipedia concept and uh, tried the same on the dbpd obtained list and the alchemy obtained list and you can see that we were able to remove 66% 33 and 72% of the irrelevant entities mentioned in the uh, that the set we have obtained the candidate set Yeah. Just, these are the precision scores obtained. These are just for the noun phrases. When I did the uh, precision, it was before comparing uh, comparing with the Wikipedia set. It was just 0.38, and after this this comparison, it was 0.5. And I'll, I'll just show you. Just highlight it. I think. Oh, no, you had the graph. Okay. And then probably I think I had asked you this question: How many of the relevant entities were removed? Uh, how after many of the relevant entities were removed after the support? So you have given the uh, count of the irrelevant entities yeah. removed. So here, here I have given you the the strict recall score. So the there were uh, 63 relevant entities, and out of which uh, I was able to uh, figure out this 44 relevant ones out. So this is I mean. You can see this recall score here. This is what I mean. The, the, the total number of relevant entities was 63 in my list, and I was able to uh, uh, the final list that, that I obtained had 44 of the relevant entities. So the F measure was there about 0.58 for the noun phrases. Though this uh, uh, the the idea of relevance and irrelevance was manually. This evaluation, yeah, I, I, I did this evaluation manually. Right. So, though the precision score for this alchemy was the highest, 0.692, but it, it just figured out a total of 32 entities from the entire hundred thousand set of corpus, and out of which only 12 were uh, relevant entities. So the F measure was very low. Uh, the next F measure was for uh, 0.38 for the Wikipedia and 0.58 for just for the noun phrases list that I obtained. So we just decided to carry on with this noun phrases list. These are just the precision scores. So, and and that really worked pretty well. But the next step was to club the entities like Anna space Hazari, Anna without space Hazari, and Anna and Anna Anna Hazari in a similar group. So I I just uh, actually went through twenty string similarity measures and figured out that two of them were giving me good results. So those were the Q grams uh, Q grams distance similarity measure. With a threshold of 0.75, and the next was the Charo similarity measure with the threshold of 0.8. So my final results were uh, these were the lists that I obtained uh, based on the frequency, and my final list actually clubbed the things together. Uh, but see, I mean, just using the st string similarity measure was not the. I, I think uh, for the as you can see for the second result, it's it's not uh, very good. But but for the remaining, it it was more or less. I mean, it actually clubbed the things together. So my next step was to evaluate my entire code on a bigger data set, and I did that for six different events on the, ran the entire code for for the entire tweet corpus on these six events, and I obtained the results, which were pretty <coughs> good, I think. And I, I'm actually working on the evaluation part of all these. Uh, these three events, so you you can see that uh, it was able to figure. If you see the top ten or top twenty entities, 
and mm -hmm. they are very very well. Can you explain how, how, how you get these results? Because you use you carry the... Yeah, yeah, okay. It, this Wikipedia. So what I did was, I, I just uh, used Google search for querying the... Uh, I just provided uh, the name of the... Oh, that's it. Yeah. Nice. Um, Any suggestions? So, in the entities Not list ready. that you had, right? Uh, can you go back like two slides where you had Anna, Anna Hazare for the, yeah here. Mm -hmm. Um, so you had normalized those things, right? From Anna, Anna Hazare. So I would ex I would have expected to have only the, uh, one, of yeah, one of them. One of them. Because uh, these string similarity measure that I I just told you, it, it was mm -hmm. not working well for all all of the entities. Like if I have India and Indians, it grouped them together. So I have to figure out some other way for that. What I was thinking is if if uh, if that's a name, so if like Anna is the first name of Anna Hazare, so I I use this approach to group the things yeah, together. So, uh, like the Har and the Har chain, similar. That was one thing what I was thinking. If you get to know that he's a person. Not not only this. I mean, even if the if like if it's the har and the har j, so people, I think the relevant the entity that people talk about is not of the har uh, in in technical corruption. It's for the, the har j. Right, but in an overall sense, right, mm -hmm. there is less probability of uh, another word beside a person which can be an entity. So, uh, like yeah, so right, Samsung yeah. Samsung Mobile, mm -hmm. so that cannot be considered as a Samsung as an organization. Samsung Mobile is. Right. A different thing. So if you get to know that there is a person's list, like Anna and Anna Hazare can mm -hmm. be the same thing. The string similarity shows that Anna and Anna Hazare is the same. Okay. And Rahul and Rahul Gandhi, Gandhi is the same. So if you get to know that Rahul Gandhi is a person, mm -hmm. so you can actually, uh, uh, by the similarity measure, you can uh, just throw out Rahul Gandhi, not Rahul, or Anna Hazare, not Anna. Mm -hmm. but whereas in organizations, okay or probably countries, yeah. you won't be able to do that because Indians or India news cannot be India. Mm -hmm. Or th that is just yeah. uh, the first thought I can get yeah. after looking at your results. Yeah, that is one point. The other point I have mentioned to you is that you can use the context. If two entity, they, they are supposed to be one, the same one. They always kind of appear in similar context. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Context by context, you mean a set of words, basically. Yes, like backwards like words the, yeah, like words of being known. Right. Mm -hmm. Since you're also using Wikipedia and you're just trying to use the background and it's saying that this is a person, so there's a possibility of an, there is less possibility of another word. But but that, that's even not true because I mean there there may be many persons with the uh, subtitle as Bush and and that will really to right, but like. at this particular thing, like Lokpal and Lokpal Bill. Yeah, because I also tested for other events like um, the 9-11 attack. Okay. So it, it had those entities oh. too. Mm -hmm. So that was also a problem. It was the query that you give into the, oh, to the I Google. See. Okay. So if I actually take into account the, uh, when I queried for, for my first results, <coughs> I just gave few of the seed words as the input and it, uh, uh, it actually removed many of other entities too. But then what I did was I, I selected the top 10 uh, words from my frequency list and gave that as an input along with the event ID. Mm -hmm. So I, I just selected the top 10 pages from the Wikipedia. So it was kind of a bigger set and it almost included all of these entities. So it was better than that. I just provided it with few of the seed words as an input. But uh, so I when I actually, I just said it, when I give Anna Hazare as the seed word, what it gives me, it, it just figures out all the categories of the, uh, like it belongs to some of the category of the politician, and it gave me a list of other politicians. Uh, and if I give it the seed word as the corruption, it gave me anti Bihari sent sentiment and something like that. So it was not really relevant to my context. Are you also, you made the model for the seed and also in Yes. And it's not really good. I think it's partly because the Wikipedia corpus yeah, is not updated. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you can use a user since the Wikipedia corpus is not updated as yeah. more a general context. 
like you can give few keywords of a particular event and it will give a gen general generic view or generic model of that particular context uh, that that will be helpful for kind of uh, prediction there is a possibility of whatever user gives right that few of those people or organizations or uh, any objects might be spoken about by people later sometimes in the in the same event So one thing that uh, we have been discussing with Pramod okay. is that you guys use the, the Stanford parser, yeah. no, 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 but uh, n gram, okay. two gram, three gram. Whatever. So <coughs> I, I would say it's, it's, it's it might be nice to do a little comparison on that. Absolutely. So yeah. in Ichkai, in Ichkai, 2011, this year. So there was a paper on uh, finding top K relevant uh, words or something, top K similar words. Okay. So what Ajit mentioned just now is kind of part of their evaluation. Right. So what they do is they consider similarity comparisons in three different domains, three different aspects. Okay. One is uh, string based similarity, that's the first part. Okay. Second part is knowledge based similarity that you have already combined like Wikipedia, use of such things. And they also have a third part of uh, kind of similarity where they do this Google kind of thing, where they search on a different corpus, let's say web corpus for example, mm -hmm. or it might be domain specific corpus for you. So maybe the documents, that tweets you have, mm -hmm. maybe you can use that to come up with some co-occurrence kind of terms, what is ha what's the most co-occurring thing. Yeah, so I those are the three broad categories they have. So maybe if you look at that paper, she can combine all the three approaches and come up with some good... Yeah, again, again good I'm, I'm, I'm guessing more, more in a sense that in, in a in a improvement sense, like certain things, uh, like say Westminster Abbey, or royal wedding, or let's say yeah. bank holiday, mm -hmm. are they likely to be two grams or not? S -s sort of like you could get a, a 